fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. It was an ordinary day in the town of Deadwood. It was a quiet, peaceful day until just before noon. Then Ace Brogan and his gang rode in. It's the Brogan gang. Duck for cover. Don't take chances. Hey, that shot just missed. Get out of sight, you fool. Don't try to fight Ace Brogan's gang. Come on. There were a dozen hard-riding, fast-shooting killers in the Brogan gang. They swept through town as far as the Deadwood stage line office. There they halted. Half their number kept guns roaring threateningly, while the others dashed into the office and then ran out with money bags. All right, on your way, boys. Shoot anyone who tries to stop you. You there. Among those who had seen the Brogan gang attack, there was an Indian whose name was Tonto. After the robbery, he raced to a small nearby camp where his masked friend, the Lone Ranger, was waiting. Oh, Scott, hold on. Oh, what is it, Tonto? You've ridden hard. And there's plenty of trouble, Kimasabi. Ace Brogan gang hit town. Robbed Deadwood office. The Brogan gang again. Here's the way. Oh, you got Silver all saddled. Yes, I got him ready when I saw you coming. This may be our chance to get the Brogan gang. Them fellas kill everyone who tries to stop them. I know that. There are only two of us. There are twelve in Brogan gang. Two against twelve. They're good odds, Tonto, but we're going to need help. Come on, we'll call on our old friend, Barnaby Boggs. Get it, big fella. One fellow in Mump's Town. Barnaby Boggs had met the Lone Ranger on a number of occasions. It was because of the masked man that Boggs had settled down on a small ranch near the edge of a narrow canyon. After a varied career as a rainmaker, a medicine peddler, and a confidence man, Boggs had become a solid citizen. But one day he began rejuvenating his big wagon that had been idle beside the barn for years. He was at work with bright red paint, 
when his sister came from the house. Barnaby Bob! Huh? Huh? Oh, oh, great day. What are you doing? Maud, you startled me. You shouldn't speak I up. asked, what are you doing? My dear sister, when a man dips a brush into a can of paint and then transfers said paint to any given surface... You're painting that old wagon. A most discerning woman. Remarkable woman, yes, indeed. Oh, just look at this wagon, my dear. As stout as the day she was made. Mm. A little paint, a little bit of oil, and she'd be just as good as new. Good for what? Oh, questions, questions, everlasting questions. In the six months since you came to live here, Maud, you've asked more questions than my daughter asked in 19 years of life. And received fewer answers. The last time I spoke to Betty before she and her husband left to set up their own home, I warned her about questions. I told her not to question Bob. Told her that questions can drive a man from home. Drive him to distraction. Yes, indeed. Hmm. Why are you fixing up that wagon? Well, my dear, I feel the wanderlust within me. I hear the call of the open road. The urge to travel overwhelms me. You're fixing to go out flim-flamming, people. Come on. Rainmaker? No, indeed, my dear. Didn't I promise the Lone Ranger I'd drop that, uh, that profession? Then I suppose you aim to peddle tiger tonic. No. Or snake oil or some such concoction. Oh, uh, well, as a matter of fact, Maud, my dear, I have perfected a new remedy for chills and fever, faint and spell, sick stomach, Stop. rheumatic, Stop! Falling... Don't go through that list. Oh, Maud. Truth it... of it is, you're just looking for an excuse to get away from home. Now, isn't that it? Uh, yes. Well, I like that. This is the appreciation I get for coming here when your daughter got married and trying to see that you got enough sleep and ate the proper food and stopped wasting time with no good card players and... More, more, my mind is made up. As soon as I can get uh, $500 to stop my wagon, I'm shoving out. I'm going on the road with Bob's liquid bomb. Barnaby, look. A masked man and a savage. Oh, run, Bob. Oh. Run for your life. Get to the house. Hide under the bed. Oh, my sakes alive. Ah. He'll be hurt. Ah. Get out. There you go. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's you. Man alive, you're a sight for sore eyes. How are you? And you, Tonto. How? He's a lookout. Hello, Barnaby. Oh, that wasn't your daughter who ran into the house. No, no. Betty's married and settled down, living on a ranch just a few miles from here. That she may was my sister, Maud. She saw your mask. <laughs> oh. She, uh, my sister Maud, has come to make her home here. To see that I get proper rest and proper food and forswear bad companions. Uh, you've been painting. Going to use the wagon again? I'm organizing a medicine show. What's that? Oh, it's an escape, my friend. Uh, an escape from home and from Maud. But what brings you to this part of the country? You didn't come only to see me. Boggs has been a robbery in Deadwood. Ace Brogan's gang. Oh, my. They kill many? They get much? Yes, to both questions. I, uh, I want some help in capturing that gang. Well, my friend, in my earlier days, when I could ride and shoot, they called me the Scourge of the Cimarron. I was a thorn in the side of all bad men. Uh, but now... I don't want you to ride with us, Barnaby. I want you to be on the watch for Brogan and these men. They may come this way. Oh, no. Yes, it's quite likely. Oh, my, 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 don't say that. You must be wrong. Those marauders could get away from Deadwood in any direction easier than this route and with less risk. That's how the lawman will figure. Brogan is fully aware that all of the directions from Deadwood will be watched. That's why I think he may come this way. Through Grand Canyon? Yes, and once through that canyon, he would be in the clear. Well, I can't refuse you any help you ask for, but... What? Now, your place looks down into the canyon. You can see anyone who goes through. We're going back toward town and try to find some trace of the gang. We'll keep an eye on this direction. If you see anything of those crooks, build a fire with lots of smoke. Then we'll know they came this way. Uh, very well. I, I'll do it. Good. After leaving Barnaby Boggs, the Lone Ranger and Tonto traveled in wide sweeps between the town of Deadwood and the narrow gap called Grant's Canyon, looking for tracks of horsemen who might be Ace Brogan's men. Meanwhile, fate had taken the thieves to the vicinity of a small ranch. Stop right here, boys. Oh, 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 oh. Ace, we sure got clean away from Deadwood. Yeah, we're not out of the woods yet, Lefty. Yeah, but we hit our tracks mighty good. Yeah, it'd be slow work, but a good man could cut our sign. 
Got to shove on as soon as we get fresh horses. Shove on? How far? Through Grant's Pass to the open country beyond. We'll be safe when we get there. No one would think of looking for us south of Grant's Pass. I see good-looking horses in that corral yonder. That's why we came here, Cal. That's Bob Hamilton's ranch. He raised his horses. Never heard of him. Well, he's new in these parts. He has a few good horses and no hired help. He married a girl named Betty Boggs. Her pa lives just the other side of the canyon. Never mind all that. Let's get horses. Yeah, we're going to. Cal, you take charge of the men while me and Lefty go to the house. All right. Yeah, what are we to do? Pick good horses in that corral. We'll switch the saddles and saddlebags. Put lead lines on our own horses. We'll take them with us, Savvy. All right, Ace. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Yeah, come on, Lefty. We'll go call on Hamilton and have a talk. Get up there. Get along. Get up there. Betty and her husband were in their small house when Ace and Lefty stopped outside. Before Bob could approach the door, Ace walked in with his gun drawn. Bob! All right, take it easy. Hey, what's the idea of the gun? Bob, I've seen his picture. It's Ace Brooke. What? The outlaw. Well, I'll shoot him. Oh! Oh! He shouldn't have tried to draw a gun on me. You've killed him. You've shot my husband. Just winged him, that's all. Knocked him down. He better stay there. Watch him, Lefty. If tries anything, put one through his head. Right. What do you want? I just wanted to make sure your husband wouldn't interfere with the little business my boys are taking care of over at the corral. Oh, horses. We need them, ma'am. What we need, we take. Now, if you don't make any trouble for us, you'll maybe find your horses straying wild somewhere when we're through with them. You bunch of rocks. If you want to get some water and bandage and patch up your husband, you just go right ahead. We won't interfere with you. My boys will have the horses saddled. We'll be on our way in a couple of minutes. You can't get away with this sort of high-handed business, even if your ace broke. You better do what he says, man. I'll show you what I'll do. Put down that gun. I won't. I'll show Give you. Give me how that I gun. Will. Let go of me. Let go of me, you crook. Uh, you're Let a fighting wild kid. I'll help you, boss. Here's one way to stop it. Bob! Bob! Bob, you shot him again. Uh, I just built the floor close to his head. I figured they'd wake you up to the risk you're running and fight an ace broken. I'll take charge of this gun. You dirty... Uh, you better not try any more sudden moves. Hey, ace, sounds like the boys got the horses ready. Good. I'd keep an eye on the girl. Don't let her reach for another gun. Find good horses? Good. Now, ma'am, you just be quiet and keep calm, and maybe you'll get your horses back someday. When we've got a good head start. We'll turn them loose. Maybe you'll find them south of the pass. Yeah, maybe you will. Come on, Lefty. I'm with you, boy. You thieves, you murdering thieves. You'll pay for this. You'll pay, you wait and see. Oh, Bob, dear, please wake up. Oh, no. They set fire to a haystack. Bob, you've got to wake up. Please, Bob, wake up. <laughs> While Lawman sought Ace Brogan on three sides of Deadwood, a lone ranger reasoned that the robbers had traveled south toward Grant's Canyon. The masked man and Tonto were searching for tracks on the hard-packed ground. Brogan is foxy, Tonto. He'd take the most dangerous way of escape because he'd figure that Lawman wouldn't expect it. We take plenty time since robbery. Maybe Brogan already on far side of Canyon. I doubt it, Tonto. He and his men rode hard before they came to Deadwood. The horses were tired. I doubt if he'd tackle the rugged country south of the canyon without fresh horses. Oh. Furthermore, I think he'd stay on this side until he knew whether or not he was being followed by lawmen. And rest horses? Rest them, steal fresh ones. Oh, he's savvy. I think... Well, what matter? Otto, look to the south. Oh, smoke? Yes. That's the direction of the canyon. Hogs give signal. Him build fire. Say, gang, go through canyon. Come on, Toto. Get him up, scout. Get him there. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Soon after the Lone Ranger and Tonto started toward the smoke that plumed skyward, they realized that it was not a signal fire. It was nearer than the canyon. It came from a small ranch north of the canyon, the ranch that Barnaby's daughter and her husband owned. Bob, who had regained consciousness, could do nothing to fight the fire. He stood with Betty near their house and watched the burning haystacks. Those dirty pool cats, if I ever get the chance... Bob, take it easy, your wound. No, the wound's nothing but a scratch. Oh, this might be much worse. If the wind were in the other direction, our house might catch fire. Steal our horses, burn our hay. And... Bob, look, those horsemen. One's mass. Another outlaw. I'll get this one for sure. I'll shoot first. Wait, Bob, not that man. Let go my arm. No, put the gun down. I know the masked man. He's a friend of Dad's, and so is the Indian. Who are they? The Lone Ranger and Tonto. Hello there. Very hello. This must be Bob. Yes. Howdy. We saw smoke from that fire. Ace Brogan started that fire. He was here? Yeah. He shot Bob and then stole our best horse. Hello, take a look at the wound. Uh, no, no, it's, it's nothing, just a scratch. How long ago did Brogan leave? Oh, Ten or fifteen minutes ago. Maybe we can stop him before he gets through the canyon. You haven't a chance. There are a dozen men in his gang. Bob, there is a chance. How's that Mustang in the corral? Fast? Oh, yeah, he's a good horse. Then go for the sheriff. Bring him to the canyon with men enough to take Brogan's gang. But that hay's a fire. You can't save the hay, and there's little chance the fire will spread. But what's the use of getting the law? Brogan will be well beyond the canyon by the time I get there with the sheriff's men. I'm going to try to keep Brogan from getting beyond the canyon. Do as he says, Bob. If you're going after Brogan, let me go with you. You get the law. Toto's going with me. Steady, big fellow. Easy. Come on, Toto. Be ready. Come on, Toto. Let him up. Stop. Bob, he knows what he's doing. But how can he stop Brogan's gang? I don't know, but he must have some plan. Now, you just get the law and hurry. Riding like the wind, the Lone Ranger traveled south with Tonto following on Scout. He cut to the left of the entrance to Grant's Canyon and traveled up a steep trail to the mesa land above the cut. Then raced toward Barnaby Bog's small place that overlooked the south end of the canyon. Barnaby was still at work with a paintbrush while he kept an eye on the canyon. He looked up at the sound of hoofbeats. Well, howdy! Greetings and salutations. Hold over, hold Glad you've returned, my friend. Easy, big fella. Boggs, have you seen anything of Brogan's gang? No, nope, no, indeed. Glad to say I haven't. And it's not through negligence on my part. I've been right here sticking faithfully to the assignment you gave me. Haven't left the spot for an instant. Good. There's been no one come through the canyon at all. No one, sir. For that, I can vouch. Then we're in time. Uh, in time? Toto, fasten our lariats together to make one rope. Uh-huh. Tie one end of that tree. Toss the other end into the canyon. Uh-huh. He's savvy. Uh, my friend, Tonto says he savvies. I'd like to observe that he has the jump on me. I do not savvy. Put down that paintbrush and give me a hand. Uh, to be sure. But for what? Bogan's on the way. Oh, no. Yes, he was about ten minutes ahead of us. But he'll follow the trail through the canyon. We took the shortcut and came up here. Well, then... Then he is coming. Yes, and we've got to stop him. By lowering a rope? Todd and I are going to slide down that rope. Oh, and the two of you, you're going to try to make a stand on the canyon floor? That's a general idea. Here, wait. What are you doing there? Releasing the brakes on your wagon. But why? I keep the brakes set so the wagon won't roll. It's got to roll. We can't push it over the edge of the canyon without rolling it. Push it over the edge? No. No, it'll be wrecked. That's a 50-foot drop. Can't be helped. We've got to have a barricade. The canyon is narrow down there. Okay. We'll get behind the wagon. Good enough. Then give me a hand with the wagon, Tonto. Come on, Boggs. Get behind it and push. Oh, no, no. I beg. I beseech you. Do you expect Tonto and me to make a stand without some sort of barricade? Oh, my wagon. You've always boasted about the stout oak sides of the wagon. You said it would stop bullets. Yeah, it has, but but it's freshly painted. Boggs, Brogan's men are riding horses stolen from your daughter and her husband. What? They stopped at Hamilton's ranch for fresh horses. Why, those thieves? And they shot Bob Hamilton. The murderer. Just creased him. Double distilled, triple twisted sidewinder. And all that on top of bank robbery and murder. You're willing they should escape rather than lose your wagon. Who cares about an old wagon? Come on, let's get her rolling. Let me have here. I can't show it alone. Oh, can't you? Oh, by Jupiter, I did get her started. There she goes. One more shove and she'll be over the edge. All right, come on. That's it. There she goes. My wagon. Come on, Toto. We'll go down that rope and make a stand behind the wagon. Um, be ready. Look. Look to the north there. In the canyon. Here they come. The Brogan Gang. I'll go down first. Follow me, Toto. Uh-huh. Hey, bro, 
Hogan. Yeah. Look ahead in that narrow spot. There's something on the floor of the canyon. Yeah, what is that? Looks like a red wagon to me. Hey, that's what it is. Hey, someone's behind that wagon. Hold the horses. Hold, 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 hold. There's another shot. You're covered, Hogan. All your men to throw down their guns and surrender. Or we'll fire more than one right. shot. Surrender my eye. Here's my answer. Hit the ground, boys. Take cover behind rock. Hey, rock. Oh, Lone Ranger had sworn that he would never shoot to kill. Bad as he was, Ace Brogan couldn't make the masked man break that vow. The outlaws leaped to the floor of the canyon and scurried to the shelter of protecting rocks. From there, they returned the gunfire. Bullets glanced off rocks and chugged into the heavy boards of Barnaby Boggs' wagon. Keep firing, fellow. Keep them under cover. Uh, He's happy. How long we have to hold him? I don't know. Maybe them rush wagon. Climb over and get us. They rush us. We'll let them have some bullets in the legs. Two of Brogan's men were crouched behind a rock with their leader. How long is this going to keep up, Brogan? Not very long, I promise you that. How many you figure behind that wagon? Not many. Two, three, maybe four at the most. How'd it be if we rushed it? We could scramble past it in a hurry and cut those critters down. No, Cal, there's no need for that. But we can't stay here and shoot it out all day. I got plans. Just let me get my saddlebag. Yeah, where is it? Right over there, Lefty. I tossed it down for my horse before I dismounted. Grab it, will you? Yeah, I reckon I can get it without showing myself at the target. Yeah, that's it. Bring it here. <laughs> What's in it? <laughs> Something that'll get rid of that wagon double quick. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, here's the saddlebag. Want me to open it up? Yeah. There's a tin can full of blasting powder in there. Also a hunk of fuse. Blasting powder? I had it for the safe in the bank. We didn't have to use it. Now it'll come in handy. Yeah, here it is. Good. Here's a fuse. Want me to fix it for you? Yeah, give it here. I'll fix it. Then I'll light the fuse and throw the stuff at that wagon. <laughs> when the smoke's cleared away, I reckon the wagon will be gone. And yeah, maybe the critter's behind the wagon. If the blast don't get him, we can cut him down with gunfire in short order. Keep firing, boys! <laughs> Not much left. We'd better be more sparing with our shells. No telling how long we'll have to hold those men. Ah. Hi there! Boggs, you here? You're doggone right I'm here and fighting mad. I didn't see you come down the road. You were too busy, my friend. Too preoccupied. As for those thieving killers, an outcrop of rock concealed me from them. Now let me share the battle. Keep your head down. I'll show them what a Boggs is like when he's fighting mad. Yes, indeed. All right, give it to them. <laughs> It's all set. Yeah, now I'll toss it. Right. Here's a man. I like the fuse. Hey, boys. I'm going to blow that wagon out of my way. Get ready to pour heavy gunfire when the smoke clears. All right, Brogan. It's a pretty long throw, boss. You think you can make it? Yeah, watch me. Hey, it's lighted. Throw it, throw it, boss. You don't hang on to that thing. The fuse is short. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. I don't want these critters to have time to throw it back before the fuse runs hurry, out. Hurry, hurry, will you? All right, here she goes. <laughs> Look at her go. Hey, that's a long throw. Yeah, it's right in front of the wagon. Why don't it explode? It will. Just give it time. Hey, look at that wagon. It's in a million pieces. She's flying all over the place. Get ready to fire. I don't see anyone. Hey, where's the men that was behind the wagon? Yeah, maybe they went up with the wagon. There they are. They pulled back. They must have seen the bomb coming at them. The back of rocks. Yeah, now we can rush them. Come on, boy. Right. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Hey, boss, look behind us. Huh? Hey, who are those riders? They're coming this way. Where's the sheriff? The lawman. Hey, get your horses. Get going. We've got to rush those men ahead. We'll go for anyone who goes for a horse. How are you fire on those lawmen? What, boss? Get the horses. I'm hit. Oh, my leg. We can't get to the horse. We turned that fire. What does it look like we're doing? Get out of here. Get those lawmen. Get those critters ahead. We'll be trapped. we got to get clear. Roger, stop coming, sir. We can't do everything at once. The outlaws were thrown into a panic by gunfire from both sides and by the frenzied confusion of Brogan's orders. 
The sheriff and a dozen hard-riding lawmen swept down from the north, while the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Barnaby Boggs kept up gunfire from sheltering rocks on the other side. The fight ended a moment later. The next day found Barnaby returning to his home after a ride into town. Maud was at the door to greet him. Well, Barnaby, did you see all those crooks in jail? Yeah, indeed I did, my dear, indeed I did. And they'll all hang for murder, that's what. Good. But how about Bob's horse? Got them all back. And the bank got back the stolen money, too. Oh, I tell you, my dear sister, when that masked man does a job, he does it well. I'd like to see him. I'd like to thank him for getting rid of that wagon of yours. Now I dare say you'll forget your foolish notion of going out on the road again. Forget it. Maud, a bog's never forgets. But you can't go out. You have no wagon. <laughs> and you haven't money to buy one. You didn't even have the cash you needed to stock the red one. My dear, I have the money for stock and the money for a new red wagon. <gasps> yeah, reward money. Yes, indeed. The mask man saw to it that I shared the reward with Bob Hamilton. It was Bob, you see, who brought the law. You, you're going to buy another wagon? Yep, and bigger and stronger than ever. Oh. With my name in gold on both sides. Barnaby Boggs. That's me, Maud. A friend of the Lone Ranger. I'll tell you. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by...